Now, strategy optimization is a very controversial topic. Just talking about backtests or trading algorithms starts ticking people off left and right. But then you also mentioned that you optimize those algorithms. Oh boy, then just hold on to your hat. You will hear all sorts of things about how backtests and automated trading algorithms don't work. And if yours manages to make money, you're just getting lucky now. Regardless, I want to talk about strategy optimization, explain to you why it works, how it's done, and what you should avoid when optimizing your strategy. Now, obviously, before we start, we need to establish what am I talking about when I say strategy optimization. I'm referring to actually finding optimal parameter values for certain variables in your strategy. For example, if you set your stop based on a value of an average true range, what multiple of the average true range do you use? Half ATR, single ATR, double ATR or what period of said ATR gives the most optimal results. ATR 5, 12, 50. What combination of these values means the least fake stop outs? Which value yields the best trading performance? Remember, too narrow stops means too many fake stop outs, while too wide stops mean that you actually stay in the trade longer than necessary after the trade has already reversed. And this does not go only for stop sizes. Pretty much anything in your strategy that has a variable value can be optimized. A moving average period, breakout margin, a channel width, and so on. So so in this video, we will be actually talking about parameter value optimization. What we won't be talking in this video is actually overfitting your strategy to improve the backtest results by introducing more variables, more conditions, and most importantly, more isolated conditions that only enact a few times during your backtest, causing the backtest and this condition to have basically null statistical validity. So not talking about curve fitting here, that's a whole different subject that I will have to cover in the future video. All right, so now that we know what exactly strategy optimization is, let's talk about why and how optimizing your strategy works and why is it better to optimize than to not optimize. Let's take the same stop example from before. Imagine that we want to optimize a strategy that uses a multiple of ATR 12 for the stop size. And we want to optimize the amount of the ATRs that we use for the stop size. What this looks like is you plot the backtest performance for different ATR multiple values on the chart. This chart ends up looking something like this. Note the peak here. This is the ATR multiple value that yielded a backtest that had the best returns value. Now, obviously we understand that live market conditions will not match the backtest. When you actually go live with this strategy, the things will shift. And this shift, it's going to basically move this chart to left or right to a certain amount. So your optimal value in live market conditions will actually no longer be optimal. If you were to backtest these new market conditions again, you would actually find that the optimal value is something different. It's something close, but something different. But this performance will still be a lot better than shifting from a non-optimized value, which is somewhere lower than the peak. Imagine this is the value you started with without optimization. Clearly, when you go live, the results might shift for better or for worse, depending on which way the chart would move. And this is the optimal value. It will always yield worse results when you go live. But even in the best case scenario, the non-optimized shift will still yield worse results than the optimized value, even after the optimized value turns to worse when you go live. All right, now that we have the idea of why it's worth optimizing, let's talk about the how. How is this optimization performed? Well, actually, it's pretty simple. Your strategy is backtested a number of times, each time changing the value of the parameter that you are optimizing. This will give you a number of data points for each backtest performance measurement. You then select a measurement that you want to evaluate and then you plot these data points on the chart. You get the curve similar to this. In the example before, we used percentage returns as a measurement that we were evaluating when performing the optimization. After getting this chart, what you want to do is look for peak values in the chart. Around 80% of the time, if everything is performed correctly, you will be getting a single peak value like you see here. This peak value is the optimal parameter value to give you the best performance for the measurement that you are evaluating. Now, another very important thing in this optimization process is to actually correctly and appropriately select the measurement of backtest performance that we will be looking at when performing the optimization. Imagine you're just looking at the percentage returns and this value is the optimal value to give you the best overall percentage returns rate for the backtest. Well, what you don't know is actually that this value might increase your maximum drawdown a number of times uh, compared to any other value on the chart. So a pro tip here would be to plot a value that actually accounts for both performance and drawdown. Something like a Sharpie ratio or an MAR ratio, something like that. 
or just a simple ratio of returns versus maximum drawdown. That would work as well. What I like to look at and what I actually have my software plot is MAR value since that accounts for both performance and drawdown and a percentage of winning versus losing trades. This way I can find the best performance value while still accounting for risk and see if my data set size does not suffer significantly to get these results. Also see if the ratio of winners versus losers did not change too drastically, telling me that the statistical validity of things does not vary too much when I'm changing the parameter values. And finally some tips on what to avoid. At all costs avoid sacrificing statistical validity for better results. If you see that a certain value gives you a significantly smaller data set of traits to evaluate the performance, in 99% of the cases it's going to be better to avoid this value even if it gives you significantly better results. Remember, we are scientists here, we use statistics and we play the numbers game. And for us to win at this game, our statistics need to be valid. Hence, a larger data set is always more preferable than better results. Just because then you will be able to trust those statistics better, especially when it comes to drawdown periods. You might start doubting yourself and your algorithm when things go south for long enough. But if you know that your statistics are valid, were performed on a large and diverse data set and they tell you that things are going to be alright in the end, you're going to have a lot easier time trusting those statistics than if you had great backtest results but only had like 15 trades to account for. You will definitely start doubting that a lot easier and guessing if it was just luck that gave you these great results. So there you go, that's how strategies are optimized. Now if you like what you saw in this video and want to get a piece of software like this that can optimize your strategy in such a way. Head on over to my Diamond Strategies website to find out how you can get a piece just for you. Now of course you will need your strategy automated and backtested to even have this optimization as a possibility, but no worries there, me and my team can take care of that for you. I always hate promoting things in my videos, I just feel like it chips away at my credibility. But this is not some sponsored deal that I'm promoting. This is something that I genuinely believe is the best thing you can do for your trading. And I just want to make it available for everyone. I feel like before today these possibilities were limited to a certain group of people. And I just want that to change. That's why I've worked for years to get this available for public. And that's why the prices are so acceptable to traders. For a price of what it would cost you to lose a couple of trades, you can get your strategy automated, tested and optimized. In the long run, to me personally, it just seems so worth it. Okay, this probably dragged on way longer than it should have. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I sure hope that you learned something. As always, if you want to join the community of people who trade using signs, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!